Hey y'all, today we're going to talk about AEP schemas. Now schemas are important because they map out exactly what your data should look like. Now, I know the naming convention of my object is a little generic, but we're going to pretend that we are filling out a form. Now, that's important because there's a lot of data that you can include in a form that'll cover a lot of our use cases. So let's start with something basic like a string. And in this form, we're passing data that includes company name. So we're going to call this field company name and the display name, something a little bit more user friendly. And the type is string. And by difficult, what I mean is let's say we want to pass in a group of attributes into customer journey analytics. Like in our form, we have an option to subscribe to multiple different newsletters. Well, to do that, I don't want to create a separate field for each newsletter. Instead, I just want to pass in an array of newsletter IDs or newsletter names. So what we're going to do is create another field by clicking on the plus button. And let's call this news newsletters. And for the display name, we'll just capitalize that in. Now under type, these are strings of, uh, the newsletter names are strings. So what we wanna do is select string. And instead of hitting apply, what we're gonna do is click on array. So you have a couple of options once you click array. Uh, but we're not going to select any of those today and instead just hit apply. Now what this does is it signals to AEP that we expect an array of strings to be passed through this schema or to be validated against this schema. So when we go back to CJA, I can expect to see a company name. Now let's pretend in this form we have an option that lets users select whether they want to be contacted by sales. To me, that sounds like a Boolean, true or false. Yes, I want to be contacted, true, or no, I don't want to be contacted, false. Let's go ahead and create that field type. And we're going to call this sales contact. You can see I'm getting really creative with these names. And under type, we'll select Boolean. But this is a required field in the form. And honestly, I only want the data if that field is there. So I'm going to click on required and hit apply. This means that whenever data is sent through this schema, it needs to have that field. Otherwise, it's counted as a failed batch and the data is not collected. Now, if someone wants to be contacted by sales, they may also want to select a specific date that they want to be called. So for that, we're going to create a new field type called contact date. And under type, we'll select date. Now we can also select date time. Date time is typically a longer string and is in a more of a timestamp format. We want something a little bit more user friendly here. And I'll go ahead and click apply. The last field type I want to test out is predictably integer. So we want to pass in a number so we can run a calculation, maybe calculate an average or figure out what the median is. So I'm going to create a new field type. And in this case, we're going to call this company size. So in this form, someone's filling out, they want to, we want to collect the size of their company. And we'll call this integer. I don't think we have too many companies that have a quarter of a person working there, unless I guess you count fractional executives and stuff like that. But for this use case, we're just gonna stick with integers. And let's hit apply. So we've created our schema, and the next big step is to actually test it out and see what the data looks like in customer journey analytics. So. I took a little bit of time and built out a test site where I could submit those fake contact leads. Let's check it out.
You'll remember our schema that we just created. And this has all of the fields that we want to track from our contact form. And this is useless if we didn't have a contact form. This contact form has all the fields that we want to track, company name, size, request for sales to contact, also a little dynamic thing where you can add month, date, and year, as well as newsletters that you can sign up for. I created this with ChatGPT and also modified it by including data layer code. The next piece that we did was add in all of the tags into launch. So we have one rule and that's for contact click. And this is powered by the data layer manager extension as well as the web SDK extension. The meat of this is in the data element section where you'll see our XDM object, which is populated by these five different data elements. Now all this is of course supported by a data stream, which is sending data to AEP and a data set, which already has a few records that I sent in from the contact form. Now we're going to take a quick look at what that server call looks like. I'm going to type in an example of some company, some random company, company size, let's say it's uh, 123. Uh, yeah, I want sales to contact me, and let's say the date is 08, 04, 1900. Newsletters, newsletter 1, 2, and 3, and I'll click Submit. And you can see the server call right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to expand this object to see what was sent. We're going to scroll down a little bit and you can see that my object has been populated with company name, company size, contact date, our newsletter information, and the sales contact boolean. Now let's see if that made it into CJA. All right, so I cheated a little bit and already created my connection in data view for my schema test. If you want to take a look back at how to create a connection in data view, take a look at my speed run, which I will link in the description. Uh, but I didn't want to go through that process today and instead just focus on the output of the data. So let's click on into the workspace that I created, which I called schema example. And you can see some company names that I had input previously. Now, the one that I had just input into my contact form, I actually did just a few minutes ago, and this refreshes every you know 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, but what we could see is actually our newsletters field, our company name field, and actually the individual newsletters independent of the company, how many people have subscribed to each one of these. Now, this is really interesting because we passed in an array of strings. Uh, into CJA. Now this is something that you can't do with some other analytics platforms that I won't name, but you'll also see in the metrics section we have company size. Now I probably shouldn't have put company size as an integer and instead use it as a string, but I wanted to see how it behaved. And in fact company size is transmitted into CJA. If you classify it as an integer, it comes in as a metric. Now, this is, this is a behavior that I honestly should have expected, but it surprised me a little bit because I was like, well, maybe I should just add this as a dimension and see the total number of so total company size next to maybe company name or the newsletters that they've subscribed to. So, you know, maybe this is just me not being super smart about it, but <laughs> classifying something as an integer obviously will, will classify that component as a metric. So keep that in mind. Let's take a quick look at the Boolean, which is sales contact. And we can see exactly how many, how many people from this company have actually selected true or selected false, which obviously if we have subscriptions to the newsletter, um, I was probably checking a bunch of different boxes. So let's actually go back and see if we can find the overall number of people who wanted to be contacted from sales. And it looks like through all my examples, I selected true. Now, if I didn't select that field and instead 
uh, left it blank, you'll see that it transmits as false. But instead, for this example, we have true, and let's take a look to see if the contact date came through. Perfect. So we have a uh, true here, but only one contact date that's listed. Since the date isn't a required field, I can actually send the data without populating the date. However, what I did figure out is that the date has to be formatted in such a way that it's processed correctly by AEP. So to do that, you want to format it in such a way where it's year, month, and then day. For more information, just Google JavaScript date format, and that's how AEP is going to expect to process those date fields. Now I know this is a bit quick and dirty, and we didn't go through every single field type, but we did go through the primary field types that you'll be using in your implementation and what they should look like in CJA. Now there are a lot of other options that you can fill out that add more dimensions to our fields, like minimum or maximum length or certain match types or whether or not a field is required. And honestly, there's probably just not enough time in my day to go through every single one of those permutations. I recommend starting with your business rules, figuring out what makes the most sense, and then contextualizing it against this tutorial to figure out which one of these predominantly used field types makes the most sense for your business and how you want to analyze your data. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.